All right, let's have a look at how the concepts of work and energy apply to the mousetrap car project. At its core, the driving force of the mousetrap car is, of course, the mousetrap. And uh, the mousetrap stores potential energy in the spring. Now, the spring provides a non-uniform force. Uh, it's strongest when it's fully set and weakest when it's fully released. And so what we have to do is we have to figure out how much work is done by the spring. Now, there is a formula for spring potential energy, but in order to use that formula, we have to know what the spring constant value is of the spring, which we don't. So what we can do is what we were doing before for calculating work done by a variable force, and that is to measure the force over the range that it acts and simply calculate the work done as the area under the force distance graph. Second item is kinetic energy. Kinetic energy, of course, is the energy of motion. So that's the energy the car will have as it's moving forward. And that, of course, is half of the mass of the car times the square of the speed, or half mv squared. Number three, work done by friction. Now friction is going to do negative work on the car, so we can estimate the friction or, or determine the friction in a number of ways, uh, by pulling it, by measuring the forces, by rolling it and doing a video analysis to figure out how quickly the car is slowing down and so on. So those are the tools that we need to find friction. Once we know the friction acting on the car, we can figure out the distance over which that is acting. Now, how do we do that? Well, you can figure out what the pull length is of your string. That will tell you how many times your wheel is going to rotate. You have the circumference of the wheel. That should tell you the distance over which the car is rolling while it is under power. From that, we can determine the work done by friction. Number four, there's one more type of energy. We've alluded to it in the past, and that is the energy of rotation. As the car is moving forwards, it's not just moving forward all as one thing, all together. The wheels are doing something special. The wheels are rotating. And as the wheels rotate, they have rotational energy. So as they get spinning, they're going to tend to stay spinning, but it's also going to take some energy to get them spinning in the first place. Now, there's a number of different ways of calculating uh, rotational energy and a number of different formulas depending on the geometry of the wheels, but for typical flat wheels, uh, flat disc wheels like a, like a CD or, uh, or an LP or something like that, then it's simply one quarter times the mass of the wheels alone times the square of the speed. Okay, so the rotational energy requires just the wheels, the mass of the wheels. Kinetic energy is the mass of the entire car. The total energy of the car as it's rolling will be the combination of kinetic energy and uh, rotational energy. So we have to add those two things together so that the total uh, kinetic energy of the car is the linear kinetic energy, half mv squared, plus the um, rotational energy, or one quarter of the mass of the wheels, times the square of the speed. So where does that total energy come from? Well, we've got the energy of the spring, as delivered by the mousetrap, so that's going to give it, it's going to do work on the car and give it energy, but we also have the negative work done by friction. So the total energy of the car should be the work done by the spring minus the work done by friction. That should give you your total energy, which will be the combination of linear kinetic energy and the rotational energy. Okay, so there's only a couple more things to figure out. The first is power. Now, we've seen that there is no time element to work. Whether something is done quickly or done slowly, the same amount of energy is expended. Power is the rate of energy expenditure or the rate of work done. So power is energy over time, or sometimes expressed as work over time. And how quickly 
your mousetrap is able to deliver its energy to the vehicle will determine its power. So you could have a car that's very, very powerful, uh, accelerating very rapidly, but for a short period of time, or you could have a vehicle that accelerates very, very slowly over a very long period of time. In either case, you'll likely come close to the same maximum speed, the same kinetic energy, but in the first case, you'll get there quicker and it will coast, and the second case, um, it will get there over a much, much longer period of time. And then the final thing is efficiency. Efficiency is a measure of how much energy you get out of a system compared to how much energy you put into a system. So in the case of uh, a mousetrap like this, or a mousetrap car like this, the input energy would be how much energy is stored in that spring. The output energy is what's your final energy, final total energy of the car. In other words, if you take, uh, say, one joule of energy from the mousetrap, and you wind up with a total energy of 0.7 joules, then the efficiency of your mousetrap car is 70%. Okay, so that's energy out over energy in and expressed as a percentage. These are the things you'll need to figure out for your car. The last few things you'll be able to determine only once you've raced it, uh, and you'll be able to do an analysis to figure out what its final velocity is, but all of the other things you should be able to do prior to race day and make predictions. Good luck.